Okay, welcome to today's video everyone. So today we're going to be seeing something a little different. It's a result that I thought was quite amazing when I first saw it. Well, the result isn't amazing, but the method to get to the result is quite amazing. So it's something you might be familiar with. So, we're going to be looking at the integral of 1 over x squared plus 1 dx. Now we all know, or you might know, that this is equal to 10 inverse x plus a constant c but I found this way of getting to this answer quite amazing and I just wanted to show it with everyone now it will involve a bit of knowledge about complex numbers so hopefully you know your complex numbers and you can follow along okay so let's have a look at it let's look at 1 over z squared plus 1. Now, here z is a complex number. Now, we can decompose this into partial fractions. So, the roots or the factors of z squared plus 1 are z plus i and z minus i. Now, we want to decompose this into partial fractions. And this is the way that we do it. Okay, so now to make the common denominator, common denominator will be z squared plus 1, and that's equal to 1 over z squared plus 1. In fact, it needs to be identical to this. So the two numerators need to be identical. So 1 is identical to a times z minus 1 plus b, sorry, z minus i plus b into z plus i. Okay, now if we let z equal i, what do we get? We get 1 on this side, this side's not affected by z, so it's still 1, equals b into 2i. i plus i here is 2i. And we can divide by 2i on both sides. And of course we can multiply top and bottom by i and we'll get minus i over 2. Because on the bottom we have minus 1 since i squared is minus 1. Okay, now let's let z equal minus i. We'll get a similar result. We get 1 equals a times minus 2i. And of course, this goes zero. So we can divide again. Minus 2i. Times top and bottom by i. And we'll get i over 2. Okay, so. Now we can write our partial fraction. So we have 1 over z squared plus 1 is equal to a over z plus i, but a is i over 2. So we have i over 2 all over z plus i plus now minus i over 2 over z minus i. Okay, so now we want to integrate this. So if we integrate with respect to z, where z is a complex number, and you might be a bit worried about the rigorousness of this integration of complex functions, but rest assured you can integrate complex functions. So that's going to be equal to this integral, because this is just the partial fractions decomposition of the same integral. Okay, we can take out i over 2. And we get the integral of 1 over z plus i minus 1 over z minus i dz. Okay, now, assuming that we can integrate complex valued functions with complex numbers, you should recognize these as logarithms. 
but they are a different type of logarithm. They are the complex logarithm. So the complex logarithm we denote by a capital LN, and we do not need absolute value signs. And you'll see why in a moment. So it'll be Z plus I minus the complex logarithm of Z minus I. And of course we have our plus C. Okay, just move that up. All right, now, just like with a real valued logarithm, the difference of two logarithms is equal to the logarithm of their quotient. So we get the complex logarithm of z plus i over z minus i, of course, plus c. Now, one thing you need to know about a complex logarithm is that if you have the complex logarithm of some complex number, maybe omega, that's equal to the real valued logarithm and the absolute value or the modulus of omega plus i times the principal argument of omega. Okay? So that is what the complex logarithm is and how we can relate it to the real valued logarithm. Okay, so continuing, we'll get, and using this rule here, we get i over 2 times the natural logarithm of the modulus of this complex number, z plus i over z minus i, plus i times the argument of that complex number, z plus i over z minus i, and of course we still have our plus c. Okay, so, how do we determine these values? Well first, this complex number z, we want it to be x, because remember, we want it to be real, we want to integrate this, val this function here, 1 over x squared plus 1. And here, x is a real number. So, let's let z equal x so that z is real. So now z is a real number. Okay, let's have a look at what we get. We can draw this on the Argand diagram. Okay. So here, that's your imaginary axis, and that's your real axis, so that's the imaginary of anything, any complex number, that's the real of any complex number. Now, we want z plus i over z minus i, but now z is equal to x, so really what we have is z plus i over z minus i, that's now equal to x plus i over x minus i. Alright, so if we go across x units, here's our point, and we go up to i, and we can go down to i, so minus i, now we can draw this vector in, and we can draw this one in as well. Okay. So this is now the point x plus i, and this is the point x minus i. And we formed two triangles. Now these triangles are the same. These triangles are the same triangles. Okay? So, the reason that they're the same triangles is because the modulus of x minus i is equal to the modulus of x plus i. So these two lengths are equal, and this angle here is equal. It's pretty easy to see that these are equilateral triangles, not equilateral, equal triangles, just flipped over the real axis. Okay, so if these are equal, then this hypotenuse is equal to the length of this hypotenuse. And so we get the length of the hypotenuse, which is the modulus of x plus i, that's equal to the modulus of x minus i. Okay? Now, if we divide by the modulus of x minus i, and we know that's not equal to 1, sorry, not equal to 0, because 
it's quite clearly not equal to 0, we'll get x plus i divided by x minus i is equal to 0. And of course, this is equal to x plus i over x minus i, taking the modulus of the whole thing. Whoops. Oh, excuse me. That's equal to 1. So this is equal to 1. Okay, but if you look here, we, we need the logarithm, the natural log of this this number. So remember, this is going to produce a number. And so the log, the natural log of x plus i over x minus i is equal to the natural log of 1, which of course is equal to 0. Okay, so now we've worked out one part of this. Because remember, we let z equal to x, and we worked out that the natural log of the modulus of x plus i over x minus i was equal to 0. Now we need to work out what arg of z plus i over z minus i is. Okay, now, you would know that the argument of z plus i over z minus i, this is similar to logs, has similar property, because you can split this quotient up into a difference. So that's sort of similar to the log property there. Okay, now oh, we're going to need the diagram here. Now the argument of z plus i, well that's the angle that it makes with the positive real axis. And that's just theta here, right? So it's this angle here, which is theta. Okay, so we have, this is equal to theta minus, now what's the angle that z minus i, or because z is equal to x, x minus i makes with the real positive axis, that's minus theta, because we're going this way, so it's now minus theta, so we have minus minus theta, which is equal to 2 theta. Yep, so it's equal to 2 theta. Okay, so now we can go ahead and substitute those back into our value of the integral. So, by letting z equal x, we obtain the integral of dx now over x squared plus 1 is equal to i over 2 times the natural log of the modulus of x plus i over x minus i plus i times the principal argument of x plus i over x minus i and all plus a constant. Okay, now, remember we got this value here to equal 0 so this is a 0, plus i times, now the argument of x plus i over x minus i, that's equal to 2 theta, and we plus c. Okay? So now we get, now this is a 0, so this goes, we get i squared 2 theta over 2, plus c, now, i squared is minus 1. These 2's will cancel, and we get minus theta plus c. Now, I'm going to use a little trick here. And the trick is that we can write c as equal to some other constant k plus pi on 2. So this is still a constant here, but we're just writing it in this form. And you'll see why we do that in a moment. So we can write c as, so we have minus theta plus k plus pi over 2. And I'll write that like this so we can see exactly why. So now we're going to consider this angle here. Now, if we look back to this triangle here, this triangle right here, I'll just draw that one right here. So remember, we had a right angle triangle. The length here was x. This went up one i unit, so this length is 1. 
Now, if this angle is theta, then this angle here is pi on 2 minus theta. Okay, now, if we have a look at 10 of pi on 2 minus theta, that's equal to opposite over adjacent. So we get x over 1. And so there we get pi on 2 minus theta is equal to the inverse 10 of x. And now we can substitute this back in here. And we get k plus 10 inverse x. And so therefore, we can conclude that the integral of dx over x squared plus 1 is equal to 10 inverse x plus some constant. And here, k is a real number. And so this... is your final integral. I hope you enjoyed this neat proof of the integral of 1 over x squared plus 1. Please subscribe for more videos. Thank you.